Hi folks, welcome back to the channel. Thank you very much for joining me once again. You're always most welcome. Well, today we continue our 50 years odyssey. I've stopped giving it titles now because it just goes on and on. As I said in one of the other recent videos, it's like war without end. Matchbox 50th celebration birthday party without end. <laughs> Who cares, hey? It's great. So today we've got um, we've got a couple of um, of the armor range, which uh, now I'm a bit confused about this one because I thought I'd already done a review on this, but I can't find it. And I think the reason is I have this kit, but I think it's in a it's in a cellophane wrapped, and I'm too chicken to open it type of uh, situation. <laughs> so um, yeah, uh, this has been kindly loaned to us by our good friend John Bevan from down in the southeast of England there. Uh, and John has got one that's actually open, so we can have a proper look at it for your entertainment and viewing pleasure. So this is actually a 1978, it's one of the later armour range. Uh, came out in 78, and it's the M40 Gun Motor Carriage, GMC. So it's basically a self-propelled howitzer on what is effectively a, a Sherman uh, Sherman M4 chassis. And it's got the, it's the HVTS, the, uh, I'm trying to remember all the... Nomenclature, but it's got the later type suspension, a little bit more, a um, bit, bit of a softer ride, and a bit more um, pliable over rough ground. So, let's take a look, zoom you in, and see what we have here. Now, these came in in 1945, pretty much right at the end of the war, and then they were used in extensively used in Korea, and I think some of them were even used in Vietnam later. But we have here um, a scene from Germany in 1945, and it says on the cover on February the 23rd, 1945. A massive assault by the Allied armies smashed through the Ruhr. The later self-propelled heavy guns of the 22nd Artillery move in to join in the shelling of Cologne and by the 10th of March Cologne and 150 miles of the west bank of the Rhine had fallen to the Allies. Now this is a 155 millimeter howitzer basically uh, and as I say there was um, I think I think the one in Vietnam actually I'm trying to remember the the time I do a kit of it don't they? And I'm trying to think what it's called. It's a slightly different name, but it's the same, basically the same gun, with just a slightly more advanced chassis, I think. So, this is, as I say, 1978. It's PK 86. On the side, we've got some nice uh, image of. Uh, they've, just, they've actually changed it on the armor kits. And the armor kits, instead of doing it as an image of what it looks like without paint, they actually show what it should look like if you've painted it up. And then. Other side, of course, we've got some uh, adverts, if you like, for their other products, including the original artwork versions uh, with the Hannah Mag with the Spastica, and we've got the uh, the radio car, which is PK85, the T34, and the Honey Stewart. More on the Honey Stewart later. I haven't got that one, but Mr. John Bevan has got it, and he's sent that along for our great viewing pleasure. So you'll be seeing that in the non too distant future, I'm sure. On the back, we've got a diorama. We do like a diorama again. Um, these later ones, sort of 78 onwards, they did they made the dioramas a little bit less, uh, a little bit less uh, intricate, a little bit less involved, but they're still very nice, and they still if you paint them up nicely. They still set the kit up really well. So have a look at this. Because this has this great big stabiliser bar at the back, which is like a, you know, it sort of digs into the ground to combat the effects of the recoil here. Uh, I'm sure it has a proper name, but I can't quite remember what they call it. Um, uh, and it says that there are two versions here. There's the uh, 446 Armoured Artillery Battalion at Luxembourg, or the 22nd Armoured Battalion Division in Cologne, as per the cover. And it, this has got a window box, and it's interesting, it's 78... So this is the last generation of window boxes on the armour. In fact, the last generation full stop, I think. Because after 1980, they seem to drop them completely, the window, which is a shame. I think it's nice to see what you're getting. Especially as a youngster, when you spend all your pocket money on one of these. I think we all like to have a little look through there, a little peep through the window. <laughs> and see what was on the other side and know what you're going to get for your money. So that's great. Anyway, thank you very much to John for sending along. Let's have a look at what we've got, because obviously I have been rather remiss on this one and I haven't entertained you with one of these so far because I was too frightened to open it. I don't know why. <laughs> oh! 
Oh dear, we have a slight problem I'm afraid, there are no instructions in this. Oh crumbs, Did, does John know that? Uh, they're not in all the other kits so they can't be, no they can't be because they're on seal. Oh dear, well that's a little bit of a blow, um, sorry about that, I didn't know that, the first time I've opened it. Well anyway, that'll make it a short review. <laughs> Uh, let's have a look at these decals because we've got some that don't look too bad here on this later blue paper. So, this is actually peeling away and you can see that the actual condition they're in is not, not bad at all, to be fair. I think that's uh, probably very, very usable indeed. Mandy. <laughs> hmm. So you've got the two options there. So we'll get straight into it. I'm so, sorry about the lack of instructions. I'm not sure if John's aware of that. He didn't mention it, so I suspect he didn't realise himself. Um, and having not built this one, I can't help him there. So essentially we've got a green and a brown sprue. We've got the green here with all the main chassis. So you can see what a great big chunky sort of vehicle this is. It's like a big Sherman chassis with the later um, suspension, as I mentioned. And then it's got this big sort of heavily armoured side to protect all the ammunition. Um, I did do a review on the Priest, which is a very similar kit, it has to be said. But there's some nice detailing here. I mean, look at this here. On the top of the actual chassis, you've got all sorts of grills and grates. And you've got all the areas where you've got sort of a... Um, uh, just behind the mount for the gun here, you've got this uh, like walkboard area, so it's got a high grip um, surface for the soldiers for their feet. You've got the big 155mm howitzer barrel here. Sadly it's not hollowed out at the end, so you might need to go, if you're going to build one of these, you need to go at it with a drill, I think, just to give you a bit of a more realistic barrel. And then we've got your drive sprockets um, and the bits of armour here, the, the like glasses armour that goes around the actual gun itself, protection for the crew, mud guards here, and dun, 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 bits of the front drive system there, the, uh, the uh, transmission where it comes out of the side. That's kind of it really. Uh, oh, there is also some uh, Oh, these are the hydraulics, aren't they? Here, it's the two of them. Yeah, the two of them. You've got the hydraulic rams here that operate the gun barrel to go up and down. Very nice. Then we've got um, some rubber band tracks, which actually don't look bad at all. In fairness, these uh, we have seen one or two from Matchbox lately that have been very weak looking, but these look pretty strong. In fairness, they just you know they link over so like so, and then they loop through there. See the open loop at the end. So that's okay. Nice looking tracks, look fairly realistic. The scale, I think that's fine. And then, we've got the diorama. Now, I was saying it was a bit basic, but actually it's not too bad. It's got a shell hole here. You've got lots of bits of, uh, sort of, I don't know, twisted metal or fencing that's been run down. And then you've got your, your tracks here for your, your M40 to sit on. It's just a bit small, isn't it? You know, the earlier dioramas are just a little bit bigger and they started doing this because you could tell Matchbox were in financial trouble. They, they carried on doing them, but they just reduced the size a bit. You know, normally that would have been about that big. Um, you know, just bigger generally. Um, but now you end up with it just, just about half sitting on it and half sitting off it where its tracks will be, which is a little bit disappointing. But that is what was happening with all of them in, in the sort of late 70s when they, they got into financial difficulties. You've got the underneath here of the chassis. And here you've got your, uh, what is it, HTVS, uh, Vluton, the Vluton type suspension, later suspension, um, which you won't see on the earlier Shermans, it looks quite different. Uh, and then you've got all your wheels, and lots of wheels there. Here's your big blade, like a, uh, the sort of spade shovel that goes in the ground to act as the stabiliser that combats the effect of the, the recoil and stops it being pushed backwards. You've got your barrel lock here. See that? Barrel lock. There. And then we've got, this is the, again for the, uh, the shovel at the back, so stabiliser shovel. That's part of the reinforcement. Gives it the strength. And then here you've got the, uh, the back plate which goes up and down and acts like a standing area 
and they're actually operating the gun. So they actually stand on this, uh, it's like a kick plate type um, standing area with a very high grip surface again, uh, which will all be steel no doubt in the real, in the real vehicle. And then you've got some idler sprockets here for oh, get some focus. Idler sprockets here for the actual main dryer. That's the back one. Um, and there you have it, basically. Um, looks very, very nice. Now it's a bit of a problem up to this particular example because it's got no instructions, which is comes a complete bolt from the blue. Didn't expect that. I, I'm not going to mark it down for that because instructions are missing. You can't judge. You know, the one that you will buy, uh, or the one that I've got, will we'll probably have its instructions. So, yeah, so we'll mark it now. There's no flash here, no flash at all. The one thing that's missing, I think, I'm going to mark it down for, actually, not the instructions so much, but there's no figures. And they used to have a lot of figures, didn't they? And this time they've, they've skipped them for some reason. So that's a bit disappointing. Anyway, there we are. I'm going to give it 9 out of 10. Hope you'll give me 10 out of 10 with a thumbs up. Smash that like button and all that stuff. And uh, a bit brief for this one, obviously, because we are a bit missing, <laughs> but not to worry. Thanks a lot for watching. Please tune in for the next one that's coming along soon. Hope you enjoyed the show. Thanks a lot. Bye for now.